A lot of people say the Pi game is slow, and that's because it is. However, there's more to that story than there seems, and Pi game is honestly a good fit for more types of projects than people generally think. Pi game's reputation for being slow partially comes from its wide use for education and beginner projects, so Pi game's performance is often portrayed as worse than it actually is because of the poor code written by beginners. It also gets a bad rep graphically for similar reasons. If you're watching this video shortly after it comes out, you probably know who I am, but I suspect this video will get some traffic far into the future from people researching the subject on their own, rather than YouTube recommending the video to them. For those who don't know who I am, I'm the Fluffy Potato. I've been making games using Pi Game since 2013. I've made two commercial projects with Pi Game, and I'm working on a third. My first two were released before I had the marketing power of this YouTube channel, and also when I was less skilled. <laughs> But I still managed to average around $20 in earnings for every hour I put into making a commercial game, which proves that Pi Game can be commercially viable in some cases. Needless to say, I know what I'm talking about on the subject of Pi Game's performance and its impact on use in game development. There are two parts contributing to Pi Game's supposedly poor performance that you should understand if you're working with Pi Game. Understanding this will allow you to better use Pi Game for what it's effective at. The first part is that Pygame itself is a wrapper for the SDL library, or SDL2 in the case of Pygame2. The second part is what people believe to be the main issue, which is that Pygame is for Python. It's not actually as big of an issue as people seem to think. There's kind of a misconception there, but that'll make sense in a bit. So SDL, or Simple Direct Media Layer, is pretty much just a library for dealing with video, audio, input, etc. SDL was widely used to make games in the past, but it also served a broader purpose outside of just games. I mentioned before that Pygame is a wrapper for SDL. That means that when you call a function in Pygame, it normally goes and calls some SDL functions that were written in C. Many Python built-in functions and libraries operate this way, such as OpenCV, which is part of what I use for the avatar I use when I'm streaming. Everything I wrote for it is in Python. Knowing that many libraries operate like this is actually how you get the most out of Python in general, not just Pygame. Anytime you do something expensive in terms of processing power, it's best to offload it to some built-in functions or libraries written in C when possible. So if Pygame is offloading much of the functionality to something written in C, why is it slow? Well, in short, SDL only uses the CPU for rendering, while most modern libraries and engines use hardware acceleration with the GPU. SDL2 has support for hardware accelerated rendering, and that functionality is partially implemented in Pygame 2, but it's not documented yet. It may be worth looking into if you're watching this video a couple years down the road. I won't fully explain this, as there are a million other sources for this subject, but in short, the GPU is much faster for rendering operations than the CPU. So if the hardware accelerated rendering is so much faster, then why would you want to use something like SDL in the first place? Well, SDL is easier to get into and generally quicker to write code for depending on what you're doing. This is because working with the GPU takes some extra steps that require you to write code differently to get the most out of it. Since Pygame is essentially a wrapper for SDL that's meant to be used with Python, it ends up being an extremely good library for educational purposes because of SDL's approachable rendering system and Python's simplicity as a language. However, it's important to not just look at Pygame's use in education. It's extremely effective for rapid game development, assuming you've got a decent library of reusable scripts for certain systems like physics, particles, and entities. If you're a solo developer like I am, you can get stuff done very quickly. See the 20-something game jams I've participated in. With the SDL discussion out of the way, it's time to discuss the other thing affecting Pygame's performance. Many beginners that get into Pygame for educational purposes will write bad code, which hurts their performance. When working with Python, you don't have as much room for mistakes compared to working with something like C++. If you design your code poorly in C++, you can get away with it for a while before the performance drops become too much of an issue in many cases. For those who don't know, languages like C or C++ are about 100 times faster than raw Python when you strip out built-in functions and libraries written in other languages. As mentioned before though, Pygame's rendering functions are written in C, so the way you structure your own stuff in Python code is usually the bottleneck, not the rendering. Writing good code with Python is perfectly good enough for many types of games, which is why I'm able to stick with Python. 
This may sound like a pain, but in the end the development time with Python is still significantly lower than using other languages in my opinion. It's just a very different experience. I don't have time to get into the details of all the different things you should be doing to get good performance in your games, but 90% of the time the solution involves dictionaries. I may make a series on it at some point though. I've got two more crucial points to mention regarding the Pi game's performance. First off, please remember to use .convert on your images when you load them. If you skip this step, you're missing out on a 10x performance boost in some cases. Many newbies don't know that you need to do this and end up with super slow games as a result. The second thing is that you should be using Pygame 2 instead of Pygame 1.9.x nowadays. Pygame 2 is around two times faster than Pygame 1.9.x in many cases. Just keep in mind that the difference dramatically varies based on what you're doing. Just from these two points alone, many beginners using Pygame are getting around 1 20th of the performance they could be getting for raw rendering, which is where a lot of Pygame's bad reputation comes from. So now you know the details of why Pygame is considered slow and roughly what you can do about it, but I know many people still want to double check if their game idea is doable in Pygame since I get emails about it all the time. Making a game is a big project and you don't want to end up switching your library and language halfway through, so I understand the concern. You can make just about any 2D game with Pygame, although I specifically recommend Pygame for Pixar projects as you can get the most out of the CPU based visual effects when operating at a lower resolution that gets scaled. The visuals are the main thing you need to be concerned about when determining if Pygame is a good fit for your project. The genre doesn't really matter, so you can make platformers, action games, RPGs, puzzle games, etc. While Pygame doesn't natively support networking, that's not an issue if you want to make online games since you can use other libraries for sending data over networks. It's actually pretty easy to make online games with Pygame when you're working with other libraries. Another thing that Pygame doesn't natively have support for that you don't want to be writing yourself is physics. But if you want physics, there are things like PyMonk and Box2D that can be used with Pygame for physics. So as I stated before, the main concern is just visuals. Those other elements you can just use other libraries mixed with Pygame for. Here are a couple things I don't recommend doing in Pygame. The biggest one is any project where traditional shaders are necessary. You can use shaders in Pygame, but you just end up using OpenGL if you're doing that and you don't use many of the normal SDL bindings. You may think that shaders are necessary to make a game look good, but they definitely are not. There are all sorts of CPU based visual effects you can create. Obviously another thing I recommend avoiding Pygame for is if you want to do anything in 3D. While I've done it and I use it for the avatar I stream with, Pygame is not meant to be used for 3D projects. There are plenty of other alternatives for that. Finally, the last category I'd like to mention is any game where you want several layers of full resolution visuals. I can get about 10 full layers at 1080p before I drop below 60fps, which isn't ideal for some projects. This is why I recommend pixel art when working with Pygame. You can use significantly more layers if implemented properly. Even though these things don't mix well with Pygame, that doesn't mean you can't use Python for them. People tend to overestimate the performance costs of game logic, and you can definitely make 3D games or games with shaders using Python. Take a look at things like PyOpenGL or Sina or Raylib if you're interested. Python could theoretically be used as a language for a game engine as well, and I think it'd be a good fit. The closest to actually doing it so far is Godot, which uses GDScript, which is pretty close to Python. That's a subject for another video though. That's the core of my thoughts on this subject. I can talk about it for hours given the opportunity, and I've brought it up several times in my streams but I just wanted to mention the important stuff here. Please consider subscribing if you're interested in game dev with Python as I'll likely be trying out things like Orsina and Raylib in the coming year. I want that silver play button.